This module is about raster analysis. It covers the learning objectives of map algebra, mathematical functions and conditional functions and how to use them, and how does the neighborhood, zonal, and global uh, functions uh, work, um, and how does the logical operations, reclassification, overlaying, and clipping can be done with the raster data? And lastly, how, does, how, uh, how do we calculate distance functions? And how can they be used to create cost surfaces? So raster analysis um, is in a way similar to spatial analysis, but it applies to raster type data. And it's a, a set of operations um, on the coordinates and the attribute values of the grid cells in a raster data. So if you remember from our previous discussion in the spatial data model, raster is a matrix. And so it's a matrix of values. And therefore, raster analysis is basically matrix algebra, um, also called map algebra where we add and subtract and multiply matrices. Um, one of the things that has to be uh, considered in raster analysis that the input must be compatible. All the inputs that are being combined through raster operations must be compatible. And by compatibility, we mean that the cell sizes should be the same, um, which means same resolution. And secondly, the matrix size should be the same. So the same number of rows and columns in the two matrices. In other words, they should correspond to the same area on the ground of the, uh, on the ground surface. So in raster analysis, map algebra is one of the key ways we, we manipulate or process data. And it map algebra is basically matrix calculation. And it works only with the raster layers that are ordinal, interval, or ratio type data. Um, there are three things we can do with it. Uh, we can do a unary operation, which is which only requires one input, a binary operation, which requires two inputs, or a ternary operation, which requires three inputs. So here is a unary operation. We, we take the raster data x and we multiply it by two. So each cell value is multiplied by two to create the output cell. Seven is 14. In binary, we take two inputs and we combine them through matrix algebra or map algebra. So in this case, we take layer B and layer A and we add them. So this is a cell by cell addition. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. So the output is the sum of those two matrices. Very straightforward um, uh, mathematical way of doing things. Now, ternary operation might be a little bit tricky. This is requires three inputs. So here is a ternary operation called the conditional operator. And it has three inputs, layer A, layer B, and layer C. And there's a the first input is a condition, and the other two inputs are the choices. So the condition is if layer A is less than three, if this condition is true, then choose layer B. If this condition is false, then choose layer C. So let's look at the first value, first pixel of layer A. 1 is less than 3. Now that is true. So the output will be from layer B, which means x. The second one, 3 is less than 3. That is not true. 3 is equal to 3. So this is false. So we'll choose something from C. So second pixel will be chosen from C, B. So you can see that this is a condition, and if this condition is true, the corresponding pixel value will come from B. If this condition is false, then the corresponding value will come from C. And this is how we apply a conditional operator, operator which is an example of the ternary operator that needs three inputs to create one output. Now, we can also apply mathematical functions when we are dealing with a map algebra. So um, all of these familiar ma uh, mathematical functions that you can 
applied to interval or ratio type data, uh, trigonometric functions, cosine, sine, tangent, simple addition multiplication. Um, this table provides all of these um, functions that you're familiar with, um, including absolute value, exponentials, trigonometric functions, um, integers and truncation, modulus, rounding, square root, and other roots, and powers. Um, and there are many more functions that are available in standard GIS software. Now, one of the things that you need to be watchful for is um, if the input has null values, then any mathematical function applied to a null value is going to result in a null value. So null values, most of the cases, null will produce another null. If null is multiplied to 4, it will be null. If null is added to 5, it will still be null. 